scriptures are printed in your bulletin. So let's stand together and read from Colossians chapter 2. Beginning with verse 1. For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you, and for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And this I say, as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. But no man Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. Thank you. Be seated, please. I recall the story of a pastor who was concerned about some dirty businesses that were open near a school. He protested. And his protest finally led to a court case. The defense attorney for the dirty business did all he could to embarrass the minister. And he said to the minister, Are you not a pastor? The lawyer asked him. And does the word pastor mean shepherd? The minister agreed with that definition. Then the attorney said, well, if you are a shepherd, why aren't you out taking care of the sheep? And the pastor answered, because today I'm fighting the wolves. <laughs> so there's a, a twofold aspect of the ministry. We have to shepherd the sheep and fight the wolves. Today I'm going to fight the wolves. In the study of history, the golden age of Greece was the age of philosophy, intellectualism, and idolatry. It is the home of Plato who taught Aristotle philosophy. It is the home of Diogenes, another philosopher. And then there was Socrates, the teacher of Plato. Aristotle, the teacher and father of logic. Euripides, the father of drama. And Archimedes, of comedy. And Exnophon, the great historian who wrote the Anabasis. And Exnophanes, who was a religious seeker. And Pericles, who was a Greek statesman. These men were all philosophers. They worshiped false gods, but they claimed to have a superior knowledge to anyone else. They were like the Gnostics of John's day. They assumed that they had arrived at the peak of all knowledge. And so they would gather together on a place called Mars Hill and there they would take turns offering their philosophies to one another. That was in Athens, Greece. The Apostle Paul was waiting for Timothy and Silas to arrive. He waited there in Athens. And as this little Jewish missionary, the Apostle Paul, walked into the city of Athens, he saw a monument. And on that monument it said, To the unknown God. Now, these philosophers, each one had his own separate God. 
the God of Jupiter, the God of Mercury, and some other gods. Each one had a god. And each one would proclaim the glories of his particular non-existent God. And when the Apostle Paul saw that statement on that rock to the unknown God, when he saw all the idols, it was believed that there were at least 30,000 idols in the city of Athens. Everybody had their own God. And his heart was grieved and his spirit was stirred within him. And he inquired where the philosophers were meeting. And they told him up on Mars Hill. So he went up on Mars Hill and challenged them. And they allowed him to speak. And you can read in Acts 17 his great discourse when he convoluted their doctrines. The audience were all philosophers. And he began his discourse in verse 22, Ye men of Athens. No preacher ever spoke to a more critical congregation than Paul spoke to that day when he stood in defense of Christianity. In the Epicureans, he had the high-minded rationalists whose God was their belly. The Stoics were there who extolled virtue and human responsibility and human judgment. And then Paul was face to face with the philosophies of Plato and Socrates, those great supposedly intellectual giants of ancient Greece. Paul said three important things to them. First, he told them that there was a creator. And he explained that the Lord Jesus Christ is the creator of all things. He dealt with the past. Then he told them about the Redeemer. How that Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary to save sinners. He dealt with the present. And then thirdly, he told them about the judge upon whom each one would have to stand and give an account. And he was dealing with the future. What did Paul tell them about God? In verse 24, he told them that God was the creator of all things. That everything that was made was made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. He said the heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament showeth His handiwork. He told them that God created Adam and Eve. That God created the universe. And that God, God alone, was the possessor of all wisdom and knowledge. I think back of the man in the early church age by the name of Augustine. He was a thinker. And one day he wrote a poem of his inquiries. And this is what he wrote. I asked the earth and they answered me, I am not my God. I asked the sea and the creation, I am not He. Seek higher than we. I asked the sun, the moon, the stars, the heavens. The answer came back, we are not. I asked those things that stand about the door of our flesh, and they answered, He made us. A Persian poet wrote, The world is a bud from the bower of his beauty. The sun is a spark from the light of his wisdom. The sky is the bubble on the sea of his power. Paul is writing to the Colossian church because false philosophy 
had found its way into the church at Colossae. And Paul knew that he had to defend Christianity to that Colossian church because they had made inroads with their false philosophies and their false gods into the very congregation of the church of Colossae. He was concerned that they were being led astray. And that's why he wrote the book of Colossians. He begins in chapter 2 with verse 1. I would have you to know what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. Then in verse 2, Paul wants them to understand about Christ and Christ's Father. He says in verse 2 that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. Now I've been speaking to you the last few Sundays on the Trinity. Who is the Trinity? The Trinity is God. Who is God? God is the Trinity. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And he wants them to acknowledge the great mystery of the Trinity and to believe it, whether they understood all of its ramifications or not. And he says in verse 3, and here is where he stabs to death philosophy. In whom? He's speaking of Jesus Christ. Christ is the embodiment of all wisdom and all knowledge. And he says in verse 3, in whom, speaking of Christ, are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Where do you get wisdom? Where do you get knowledge? It's all in Christ. Apart from Christ, one cannot be sure of anything. Philosophers contradict themselves continually. But you can go to Christ. You can go to His Word. And He will teach you the true realm of knowledge. He will give you the wisdom of God. The Bible is the wisdom of Almighty God. And it's all hidden in Christ. When Christ walked upon this earth, the Jews did not believe Him. In Matthew 13, 54, the people were astonished at His wisdom. When He was come into His own country, He taught them in their synagogue inasmuch as they were astonished and said, Whence hath this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? No, he was not. Is not his mother called Mary? And his brethren James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? Jesus did have half-brothers. The Catholic Church denies that, but the Bible gives their names. James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas, half-brothers of our Lord. But Jesus was born of a virgin. The others followed after him. And his sisters, the Jews said, are they not all with us? He had some sisters.